our adventures have taken us many miles from the far north to the deep south, ruling the skies with our yokes, with our toggle boxes, with our flaps, with our rudders. But not today. Today, today we take it back to the streets. The wiring of this box is quite simple because we make use of a button matrix of nine buttons. This one I've just, because I was lazy, I just soldered this directly as an input pull up button. Now, if you have any questions on how to do that, on my website, I will link it down below. There's a full description on how you use push buttons and how you can wire them up. So go read that if you want to know how you wire up the button. So the full video explanation of 40 minutes going, or 30 minutes, I don't know, going into full detail. Um, so go check that out if you get lost on how to wire up a button. But the button is just loosely wired up and these ones are just connected as input pull-up buttons as well. Now, we have columns and we have rows. Under the hood, it looks like this. We have the left pin of the momentary push button is connected to the next left pin, to the next left pin. And the same goes for the columns. So the right pin is connected to the switch below, etc. Now, the moment power starts running through, we can see which button is pressed. And why is that the case? Well, let's go take a look at an illustration. Okay, so if we would make a drawing of this, it would look something like this. Um, let's see, we're gonna... So this line is representing the power that is always high. Now the moment we press this button, the power will run from here to here, to a pin, and this line will be low. The moment we press it, this part of the line will become high, and this part will become low because it has to the ability to run back to the board through the button. Now this all works fine um, because we can just cross reference. Let's see, something happened here because it was high, now it's low. We can cross reference something happened here because this one is now high. Now, this works like a charm, but what would happen if let's do it with pink, we'd press this button, we'd press this button, and we'd press this button. Now we would have an issue if we would press this button. Why is that the case? Well, let's go to color again, red. What right now is happening is that this one and this one will be low. This one will be high because power runs through. It's fine, it can recognize it. On the right side though, if this button is pressed, could be mean that this button is pressed. This could mean that in our logic, this button is pressed. And this could mean that in our logic, this button is pressed. See where it might get confusing for the Arduino to use this approach. Now, the bright side is that we are gonna use this for your truck simulator too, right? There is never a case where we use four buttons at once. Why would you need that in a truck? Um, you mostly need one, perhaps two. And that is fine. Um, the Arduino can still deduct which button is pressed when it comes to those lower numbers of buttons. And we never need to press all four. We could even press all nine, that would be no issue. It's just that in the odd case that we want to use the three in the middle and one on the right side, it's not gonna work. There is a workaround for it with some diodes or some other coding, but in my opinion, don't fix a problem that you don't have and don't spend time on a problem which you don't have because for our project, this is fine. So we're just gonna use this approach. The moment I press the bottom button, it goes fine. The middle goes fine, the top goes fine. But if I add the um, 
far right top corner. See how it's gonna just check three buttons. And that's because we have these three lines pressed. If you press this one, it's, this one is low as well, this one is low. So it thinks these are pressed as well. It can't differentiate which one is pressed. Um, so it's just gonna press them all. Now I will put the code in the description down below. Um, well, a link to it, not the code, because I was gonna read code from a comment, but it's, it makes use of the keypad library. Like I'm usually say, keep things simple and the HID project, which enables you to create a gamepad quite easily. Um, so these two libraries are needed. I'll put them in the link as well. It will ask you to define the number of row and the columns. So in my case, it's three and three. And it asks you to define some um, keys for each button that is pressed. And the keys, in my case, can be bytes. You can even have chars in it, strings, whatever you'd like. Um, but this is just a way for it to know that if I hit the first button, I want it to return a one, a number one, not the text one, just a number. If I hit the second, I want it to return two. Hit the third, hit three, return three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, why is that important? Well, the gamepad library has this function that says gamepad.press one. That's what we see over here, one, two, three, up until 32. So if this returns one, well, it returns nine, but <laughs> is this one, where is one? Okay, bottom right, doesn't matter. Um, if that returns one, we're gonna press button one. If we press this, we're gonna press button two. If we press this one, we're gonna hit button three. So those correspond with what we've defined up here. And this is in the example, this is just a basic example that we've just pimped a bit. So we go to Arduino examples, keypads. Um, yeah, it's the multi-key in this case um, example. So what they've done, if they, they went with chars because they don't use the gamepad library, um, but the, as we're able to tell in a second, I'll go back and then you'll see that the code is basically just our code mixed into the existing example. Because sometimes you just gotta be smart and use the ideas that are already implemented instead of creating your own. Because why reinvent the wheel, right? Um, right here, we have the loose toggles. I didn't want to include them in the And the keypads, so they are just connected to the Arduino Pro Micro with their own separate wiring. And here we define the row pins and the column pins. So let's see. Row pins are on where the rows of the keypads are connected to the Arduino. And the column pins are which pins are connected to the column lines. And that's basically what we've been doing here. So these are the column pins. Well, in this case, 10, 9, 8. And these will be the row pins. 12, 11, and 10. Row, row, row. Now, these could differ depending on wherever you soldered it. In my case, I had 4, 3, 2, and 5, 6, 7. If you got any other pins, uh, just change this to whatever pins you've used. Then it has some default keypads um, where you define the keys, row pins, call pins. This is all in the example as well. So you just gotta change it to your values and all is fine. I had to set the other toggles to input pull up because we're gonna do things the easy way. Gamepad.begin. And then we just did some really ugly checks to see if these toggles are high or low, but it works. Um, these are just the same as we've done previously in all the examples of the uh, button boxes, etc. Keypad.getKeys. So if it's pressed, you press the gamepad button. And this is where the matrix that we've defined up top comes in to play. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if a key is pressed, return whatever value that's associated in that matrix to that button and press that button on the gamepads. If we release it, we will release that same button number and we're gonna write it to a gamepad. So if it's pressed, press one, for instance, here we go. So it's gonna press the one. So now we're into 
uh, well, I'm pointing at my screen, but uh, game case pressed, gamepad will press one. The moment I release it, it's gonna jump to this block of codes, gamepad will release the button I was holding. So I hope that makes kind of sense. It's a really easy code to just, uh, I just copy and pasted 90% of it, but it works like a charm. And you can use this for any game you like. It's also the plus. Sometimes I create projects that are really made for flight simming and can only be used in MFS 2020, but this one can be used in Euro Truck. You can use this in, I don't know, bus driver simulator that's coming up from Aerosoft, I believe. Um, you can use it in tram simulator, train simulator. I don't know, a farming sim. Why don't you create your farming sim? Because, okay. Let's go back. I used to have the far Satec farming panel for farm sim. Um, don't buy it. Learn how to do this because this is 10 times better in quality. And you learn something and it's like 10 times cheaper. It takes time though. Um, <laughs> creating this uh, took me a week or so. Just the uh, painting, uh, drying, designing, etc. Um, so it really takes some time. But it's well worth it if you compare it to the price of a Satec farming yoke. <laughs> so that was my rent. Let's just see how it drives. So now you also know how you can make these on your own. Uh, okay, so I got these um, fake ones. 10 pieces. Blue switches for 72 cents. Now, are they the best and are they genuine? Cherry MX switches, no, they're not, they're just cheap knockoffs. But to be quite honest, they feel great, especially compared to just a push button. Um, so I'd say go for it, you know. Uh, why spend more money than is needed? This works fine as well. So, ten buttons, 72 cents, perhaps four euros for the five euros for the um. If you buy locally, seven euros for the Pro Micro, perhaps even a bit more. A few cents for the toggles, a few cents of plastic, uh, only quite some labor intensive work. The start of the night, it seems. So let's take it for a little spin, shall we? Let's see, that's my window. There we go. A bit rusty, it seems. Do we have bigger lights? Yes, we do. Nothing is coming our way. Oh, emergency lights! <laughs> Jesus. Doesn't matter. Keep going. Oh, it's looking around. It's getting used to after all these hours in flight sim. I almost wanted to raise my flaps. And the beauty of it is it's, uh, it's programmed like a joystick, so you can bind it to anything you'd like. You can change the keycaps on it, because uh, they're just cherry MX switches, um, like, an, like they are in most mechanical keyboards. That's why you have to click D, so I've gone with blue, so they click more than the um, brown ones or the red ones. I believe there is one in there is brown, because I ran out of blues and I... Could open one of the ooh, one of the blue ones to <laughs> test if you needed a little bump in the bottom, but apparently you do. So I ruined one of the keys. Only had ten, uh, so I'd got rid of one of the blues and switched for a brown one. But it's just you know details. Still feels fine. It's just less clicky, like the other ones are. And just this is. <laughs> you can close the window. I mean, what more do we want? Now, now it's open, right? Yeah. Don't think the radio is working yet, but you know, all in due time. Big lights on. It's becoming a little bit more brighter, so it should give us some more light. Okay, sun is coming through. 
Been trucking quite some time on the road. Just me, Maloney Box. I think now I can overtake. Oh boy. I know it's illegal, and I know I'm in trouble, but... Oh. But we're fine and we made it. Nothing... Uh, nothing to worry about. Here we go. Back to the lane. So here we go, we're on the highway, we're on the highway trying to gain some speed to see if the cruise control is going to stick. Um, after that, I'm, to be honest, I'm quite satisfied. So the speed limit is 80, we go 70, we go 80, 85, and it should be staying at 85. Don't forget to turn on the lights when you're in the tunnel. Open the window. Here we go. So all in all, it works pretty well. Let's turn on the engine again. Lights. Cruise control. Big lights. Wipers. Wipers down. Window. Window. <laughs> and I still need to find a use for this one. But all in all, I'm amazed by the quality <laughs> i'm amazed by the performance um and yeah it's it's great <laughs> you might wonder why i haven't done the video about the toggle box yet and that's because you guys gave me some Amazing ideas in the comments um, last time that I've created this. <laughs> uh, why I haven't done the toggle box video yet is because that you guys um, gave me some pretty good ideas and suggestions last time that I've uh, uploaded the video about the encasing and the wiring and soldering. Um, and that's to use another Arduino as a master and this one as a slave to make sure that they're always at the right position when we toggle the switches depending on the in-game state. So if the in-game is on and you flick it, it's not gonna send it on because it's already on, etc. Um, so you can just align your hardware with your software. So that's coming up. Thank you very much for that plan. It's an amazing idea that I didn't come up with, um, but I'm gonna show you how it's gonna be done. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. It would really help the channel out and uh, keep this content coming. So thank you for all of this. Um, a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters that make this content possible. Especially sim racing for you. You've been amazing this far. Um, the toggle box STLs will be available on in the description down below. So go check it out.